Hello and welcome to our discussion of adversarial search and games. Uh, this is part of a series of topics related to artificial intelligence, and we're up to topic three. Uh, an interesting way of trying to present this, trying to keep it a little lighter uh, and stay away from a lot of the, the math and all the fun stuff that we, we may or may not like and, and love about uh, AI. So uh, games are a traditional space in which we have, have played with, with artificial intelligence. Uh, it goes back to early uh, attempts to um, attempt to show progress in artificial intelligence. And if you if you think about it, uh, it's a very well understood and relatively simple environment. Uh, if you're playing checkers, there's a certain set of behaviors related to what your pieces can do, simple rules, uh, and so on. Sometimes there's conflict, and that can occur if you have more than one agents sharing the same environment, and they may have competing goals. Uh, so uh, we we oftentimes ad address those sort of, of competing environments with uh, different sorts of approaches. Uh, sometimes we'll fall back to game theory as a means of figuring this out. And it's basically viewing agents as part of an economy, treat interactions as economies. Uh, and so you're basically uh, doing things like pruning search space to improve the amount of time it takes to do search. And that basically means you're trying to find a way to not have to, to go look in a certain branch of the tree, if you will. Um, and sometimes you'll do so in a heuristic based approach just means that you use a some guiding principles that may result in a suboptimal outcome, but you're trading off oftentimes the amount of time it takes to, to do the work. Uh, common games that have been studied are things like check, chess, checkers, go, and so on. These are deterministic games, uh, meaning that there's not, they're not random. There's no typically die rolling. Um, uh, usually two player, there's typically turn taking. So it's not some sort of kind of, a real-time strategy sort of thing. Uh, there is a, a very beginning and an ending sort of aspect of a turn. I make my moves, then it's your turn to make yours, and so on. They, uh, you, you typically have perfect information in these scenarios, meaning there's no fog of war. You can see all of the chessboard or all of the checkerboard, not just half or, or the ones that are within some proximity of, of your uh, pieces. Um, and there's zero sum, which is what is good for, for one player is typically bad for the other. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, you're not going to both win. Somebody has to lose. Uh, moving on with the types of, of, of games, you may have uh, lots of different types and they're, they're generally organized across different sort of, uh, of axes. So are they deterministic or not? Uh, how many players are zero sum? Uh, perfect information and so on. We want algorithms that um, uh, basically are coming up with a, a strategy or a policy, a policy for each of the states that we're in. So you, you have an algorithm that figures out what uh, turns to make uh, and so on based upon the information you you see. Uh, you you oftentimes will do things like a min-max search, which is make choices that are max minimizing your opponent's uh, options while maximizing your own. Uh, you expand the tree um, to a certain depth and you figure out what current choices lead to the best outcome at that depth. The depth is going to be the limiting factor of, of your processing. So if you, you to see what that means is a very simple game, tic-tac-toe. Uh, you play with a, a grid of, of nine cells. You put an X in one of those cells during your turn. Uh, and then the other player's turn, they put an O in one of those cells. So you can see the first state, uh, min, min zero, uh, is basically uh, where we might possibly put Xs. Then uh, the opponent is going to put Os based upon where those are at. And so we basically can determine uh, values out to some terminal state. And that can lead us to make choices based upon the best outcomes at certain depths. With modern computing, doing exhaustive search of a tic-tac-toe game board is, is trivial, uh, but it is, uh, as you can see, as the number of options increase, the number of choices, that search space becomes prob uh, problematic uh, for you. So there's also this, uh, uh, and th this is that form of an adversarial search, min-max, 
Uh, it's used in deterministic zero-sum games, tic-tac-toe, chess, checkers, and so on. Uh, one player uh, maximizes results, the other minimizes results is the basic idea. So you want to do the best for yourself while doing the worst for your opponent. Um, and it's a state-based search tree, uh, and it's all about the layers is based upon the, the number of terms that you're kind of looking ahead. Uh, and you're going to do a calculation, and at the end of it, you're going to uh, compute the min-max value, and then the best value uh, is going to be selected based upon that highest value. And looking at it based upon the terminal states and, and working your way back up. Um, and so you're you're going to want to pick the thing that is the best for you and the worst for someone else. Pause for me. The basic implementation uh, that you'll see, uh, and this is a commonly solved problem, uh, will follow the basic form that you're, you're you're seeing on the screen. So we start off by uh, essentially defining a, a set of, of functions, a max value and a, and a min value. And you're going to alternate between those so that uh, on one of the levels you're going to call the min value calculation, on the other one the max value calculation. Uh, and you're going to basically doing the max of, of one and the min of the other. Uh, and then you do this until you reach a terminal state. And, and uh, the, you, at the point you reach that terminal state, you return that state's utility. Uh, so you, you've got a means of determining if, if you won or not, as one example, or, or some uh, way of calculating uh, the utility uh, for that state. And so that's the basic implementation of the algorithm, very well uh, known and utilized. A basic example of going through some values, going through and going down. Uh, and so the, the basic idea is, is working through that. Uh, it's uh, generally it's going to be optimal against a perfect player, and that's what's interesting. Uh, otherwise, maybe not so much. So if two robots are fighting uh, out a game of of tic tac toe, um, then min max is going to work out. But if one of them isn't necessarily optimal, they may go down a path that wasn't uh, foreseen. So they may make a a choice that isn't uh, the maximizing their utility for whatever reason, uh, which might be counterintuitive. Uh, and so uh, the the basic, uh, there's determination, whenever you're dealing with algorithms such as min-max, you'll typically talk about things like efficiency uh, and it's it's exhaustive. It's, it's a depth first search, right? Uh, and so uh, the time and, and the space it calculates is represented as shown. Uh, it's not going to be necessarily a, a really feasible thing to do as the number of states increase. That's where we move into this concept of pruning. Uh, and the idea is that you have that search space uh, of possible states and you start getting rid of the ones uh, that may not uh, make sense. So going back to the min-max example, you start looking for a way of not having to go down uh, a certain path, right? So at the point that you've reached... Um, uh, certain levels, you can stop going down them at uh, certain other branches. So you come up with this idea of heuristics uh, that, that are uh, uh, a rule of thumb or a set of rules uh, that are used to, uh, to deal with potentially a large search space. And so by having that, it allows you uh, to then uh, potentially do something in a time constraint that you might ha not have otherwise. Uh, one of those examples is this alpha beta uh, pruning approach. Uh, and uh, the, the basic idea is that you're going to do a, a, a min value at some node n. Uh, then you're going to loop over its children, estimate the children's uh, min uh, uh, to determine if it's, uh, if it's dropping. And then determine who cares about n's value. So max is likely going to care. Uh, anyway, long story short, it is a common implementation of a way of determining if you can stop looking down a certain path. The challenge with any of these heuristic-based approaches is that they may miss the true optimal solution based upon certain conditions. But at the same time, if you're dealing with a resource-constrained situation, um, then you're, you're likely going to do it. Uh, where you're going to start pruning your search space and not going down certain approaches uh, because it, it may be that it simply can't be done. 
Uh, the next thing is to move into more uh, stochastic-based stochastic uh, games. This is closer to, to what we deal with. Our lives deal with a great deal of randomness. Uh, so there's always chance, such as a dice roll. You need an evaluation function. Evaluation function is a way of kind of similar to a, a, a utility function to determine um, uh, how good something is being done. The ideal function is the the actual min max value, but you're dealing with an approximation. Uh, so you're looking for something that is the, a good one uh, that is close to the actual one, but you may deal with um, the, these imperfections, as I mentioned. Uh, sometimes you have these local minimum and maximums, and then there may be uh, uh, where you also have something you think is going to be a maximum that isn't out there, right? So you may... A look at it in a different way. So there, there may also be synergies between evaluation functions and alpha, beta. Uh, and so you, you may want to consider combining things together. When we deal with uncertain outcomes. We oftentimes kind of calculate worst case versus average case uh, and deal with um, uh, some of these uh, things that come out. So the idea is that uncertainty is uh, an outcome that is controlled by chance, not by adverse uh, uh, adversary. Uh, so uh, it's not something that's making it not happen. It's that chance is what's making it to, to not happen. Uh, and so you may do an expecting match search. Um, so you you wouldn't know what the, the results of the action will be. Uh, so if there's uh, explicit randomness, and like in a rolling of dice, you, you may be able to come up with some approximation of the randomness you know, like if you're rolling one die, one and six, and so on. Uh, but there's other things where it becomes unpredictable. Uh, and you uh, will have failures if the robot is moving. It, it's, uh, it wills will likely slip or might slip. Um, so the basic idea is that you want um, your values to reflect an average case um, outcome, not necessarily a worst case uh, outcome. Uh, and so you're you're basically again all of this is around kind of trying to approximate some approach so that you can get something close to a good outcome but without necessarily doing all of the work so you're you're really wanting to not go down certain branches of the tree so if you can determine uh, when you shouldn't you can reduce unnecessary search space uh, you may also do things like trade off storage. This is a common computer science uh, thing to do, uh, which is to uh, trade off storage uh, for uh, some sort of speed of execution. So uh, with that, we've talked a good bit about uh, the idea here of adversarial uh, search and games. Uh, next, we'll move on to some additional topics. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, do let me know. Uh, and as always, like and subscribe. As they say, I will speak with you later.